Hello, and welcome to Health Matters. My name is Isaac Karachapon, and I am the chef here at Stanford Hospital at 500 Pasteur Drive. I'm here today to make an immunity-boosting salad. Now, this salad helps boost your immunity and keeps you healthy, especially coming out from this pandemic, and all of us need that extra immunity in us. This salad has a few different elements to it. It actually has three different cooking techniques. We do it in the raw form, seasonal, local produce in, that's best tasted in its raw form. But we also want to do some sauteed to add a little caramelization as a depth in the salad. And the third element would be to oven roast a couple of ingredients in there, especially tomatoes, where lycopene is a lot more absorbable when, when it is cooked rather than raw. So we're going to build these different flavors into the salad and create an overall flavor that starts with a, a pickled ginger, garlic, and chili vinegar that is going to flavor the, season, uh, the salad itself, act as a dressing for the fruits and vegetables that are in there, but also season the strawberry yogurt sauce that is going to go on the salmon. Yes, salmon. So we've got the sweet, the sour, the spicy, the salty, all these elements that are part of this salad, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it very much. So we're going to start this salad by doing a little prep. Now, ideally, this vinegar with pickled ginger, garlic, and chilies could use a week in marination in order to pull all those flavors both into the vinegar, but also pull the vinegar into their uh, respective ingredient flavors and also add a little texture to it. Because garlic, if you've ever pickled garlic, has a little bit more of a crispier, crunchier texture to it. And, and we want to add not just flavors, but also textures to this salad. So I do have some ingredients. We've got, in this case, serrano chilies. But you could choose jalapenos if you like a little bit more spicy, or you could choose bell peppers if, if you prefer, if, if spice is not your thing. We've also got some ginger root, fresh ginger root, and some whole peeled garlic. Now, all of these are the ingredients that are going to be pickled in some organic apple cider vinegar with, some, with a teaspoon each of salt and sugar. So we're going to start off by trimming the chilies, peeling the ginger, and you can do that with a spoon as far as the peeling of the ginger or use a knife, whichever one you're com comfortable with. And then we are going to cut, cut those into thin slices before we marinate them. So for the chilies, you're kind of just trimming the edges off and you're going to split them in half. I'm Leah Gropo, registered dietitian for Stanford Healthcare. Today, I'm going to be giving you some tips and nutritional information as Chef Isaac prepares his immunity-boosting salad. And right here, I just split the chilies in half and put them aside. Now, if you wanted to remove all of the seeds from there, you could by just using your knife and then trimming it much like that. But if you prefer to leave the seeds in there, that's okay too. I am going to use this container to put the chilies in there. The garlic can go in as whole cloves. And when it comes to peeling ginger, you could use your knife if you are pretty adept at it and just take just, just the surface off. Or if you prefer to just scrape it with a spoon, you can too, and that kind of just removes only the skin and kind of leaves the ginger as a whole. And so you're not losing any of that extra ginger to the knife. You can see what the ginger looks like after it has been peeled with a spoon. And now I'm going to cut this ginger and you can cut it at a slight angle if you prefer, about that thick, about an eighth of an inch. So that that way the ginger gets a chance to pick up the, uh, the vinegar as a marinade and gives the chance for the vinegar to pick up ginger as a flavor too. So once you're done with that and you cut it down, that goes into the dish here. And 
you've got the vinegar here. Now what you're really looking for is an amount of vinegar to cover, cover all of this. You do want to add a little bit, a teaspoon of sugar and salt. And we're going to cover this ginger, garlic and chilies with some vinegar. So once you've topped the chilies, the ginger and the garlic with the vinegar to cover it, you want to marinate this for at least a week before you can use it. So there is some prep to be done a week in advance. Um, and you put it away in the refrigerator, cover it and put it away. And here is a dish that we have marinated for a few days. Ideally, like I said, a week would be great. But you can start seeing the color change in the chilies. The bright green is becoming a little bit more of a dull green in there as the vinegar gets into the chilies and the chilies infuse into the vinegar too. So now that you've got the base of the salad or the base flavor of the salad squared away, we're going to start the next step of the salad. Okay, so for this stage of the salad, we're going to start with some grape tomatoes, which we're going to cut in half, season with salt and pepper, and then bake in the oven at 425 degrees for eight minutes. And so I have a little basil that we're also going to chop and put on top of this before we bake it. So you start by cutting the tomatoes in half and put them into a pan that can go into the oven. In my case, I'm using a, a saute pan that can go into the oven. So you want to put the cut side facing up so that you can garnish, uh, you, can, you can put this garnish the salt and pepper as well as the basil and olive oil on, on the tomatoes themselves. Now, if you have a preference of different kinds of tomatoes, as long as they are small tomatoes, they all work. So once we have them all face up in here, I'm just going to finish the last couple that I have. Just going to season it with some salt, some pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and I'm going to chop the basil. I want to highlight all the colors in the salad. When we're thinking about immunity boosting foods, we want to think about eating lots of plant-based colors. You want to kind of chop it as fine as you can and do it just before you put it into the um, on top of the tomatoes themselves. So you got them chopped a little fine and you just want to sprinkle the tomatoes, be able to infuse that flavor. All right, so while we, while we have our tomatoes roasting in the oven, we're going to also cut, peel and cut our sweet potatoes, which also need to be roasted as a part of that roasted element of the salad. So we can peel a, a sweet potato or a, or, a, or a yam if you prefer. And once you have that, you want to cut it into half inch dice. And it's important that you try to get it consistently cut to that size for a couple of reasons. One for the aesthetics of the salad itself. It, it looks uniform, but also because of how it cooks in the oven. It cooks consistently when everything is, of course, cut the same size. So here we want to cut the sweet potato into half inch slices, and then of course cut them again into half inch. I also want to highlight all the fiber in this recipe. When we're thinking about keeping our immunity up, we want to think about high fiber foods. It helps to keep our gut healthy. And so I'm going to season this with a little pepper, salt, and olive oil. We're going to toss it in there and you can do this in a bowl if you prefer and put it on a sheet pan in your oven. And while we have the sweet potatoes roasting in the oven, we're also going to saute our asparagus. To start with, I have to cut my asparagus. And so this asparagus has already been washed and dried. 
And what you're trying to do is to cut it at a little bit of an angle, but remember you're still trying to cut it at half inch diced asparagus. And when it comes to the head of the asparagus, of course you want to try to keep that so that the florets don't completely break up. So cut them into a little larger pieces just to prevent them from completely breaking down in the salad. Now while I've got the pan heating up, you want the pan to heat up before you add the oil and you want the oil to heat up before you add the ingredients that you're sauteing. So you want to give it a minute to make sure that it is warm. And I'm going to take it away from the flame as I add a little bit of olive oil to it. You're really looking at a medium flame in order to cook this. And once you kind of feel that the oil is ready, you want to add the asparagus to it. And you hear the sizzles. Now the technique of sauteing is to let it sit there for a little while to actually cook rather than keep tossing it, which is more stir frying. So you want it to pick up a little bit of that caramelization there in the pan. All right, so I am going to season it. And then let it sit. And as the asparagus gets a little bit brighter in color, but still retains that texture because you do want that texture as a part of the salad that crunchiness and the crispiness of the asparagus as, as opposed to the softer tomato. And so there you're starting to see that little caramelization coming in there. And so I am going to turn this off and let it cool. So the last few ingredients that we need to prepare before we put everything together is cucumbers, avocado, watermelon, chickpeas, pumpkin seeds, and then chopped some of that ginger and that garlic that we've been pickling and some mint leaves. So we'll, we're just going to get through by cutting some of this up. And so we can start by getting the cucumbers cut and again, half inch cubes. And so now I'm going to start putting these ingredients together in a mixing bowl. Now here I have some watermelon that I've cut into the same dice, half inch dice that the rest of the pieces are being cut into. So I'm going to add that. I have garbanzo beans also being added to it. I've got avocado that I'm also going to cut into small dice that is going to go in there. Now avocado I'm going to cut and put it to the side only because I kind of want uh, the last two ingredients that to go into it to be avocado and the tomatoes so that they don't lose its integrity as, as, a, as a whole piece rather than get mushy in the salad as we, as we add the ingredients to it. So for the salmon, we're going to put a strawberry yogurt sauce on it and so we're going to take some yogurt and some strawberries and put them in a blender and just blend them. Yogurt provides probiotics or healthy bacteria that we can consume and can help our gut to stay healthy. And to this mixture, we're also going to add some salt, some pepper, but also some of this marinated ginger and garlic and vinegar. So I'm just going to choose a couple of slices of ginger and a couple of slices of, and of garlic. And we are just going to blend it. And so to finish up the last piece that needs to be cooked for this salad, uh, we have salmon here that we are going to season with a little pepper, a little salt as we let it sit for a minute. And we're going to go over here and heat up this pan with a little olive oil 
in order to cook our salmon. So we're going to pan sear the salmon uh, to get a little color before we finish it in the oven. And when it gets to 145 degrees internal temperature, the salmon is done. Once the pan is hot, I'm going to add a little oil. So this recipe also has salmon. Salmon is high in omega-3 fatty acids. These are fatty acids that really help preserve our heart and also help to reduce inflammation in our body. So we, once the pan is hot and we've added the oil and that's gotten hot too, we are going to put the salmon. And I, as a, as a food safety or as a kitchen safety thing, I always say drop the fish or whatever you put down away from you. So if you do lose control over the, the piece of food that you're putting down to saute, it splashes that hot oil away from you and rather than on you. So you want to reduce the heat a little bit. Now, if you didn't like salmon, you could always do any other protein or even do the salad without fish or meat or anything else. There's proteins in the, in the chickpeas, the garbanzo beans. So we do have a full salad if you, if you prefer to not have uh, salmon or any meat in, in your salad. So as I lift it up to see whether um, it's browning, we are, and going to flip this over. And let's put it into the oven. And while that's cooking, we're going to get the rest of the salad together so we can see what it looks like. So in this bowl, we've already mixed the watermelon, the garbanzo beans and the cucumber. I have some of that sweet potato that's been cooked and cooled, which I'm going to also add to it. And some of the pumpkin seeds in here. And of course you can add as much as you want. I'm going to add it all. And now I'm going to add some of the things that we have cooked. The asparagus. Of course, these have been cooked and cooled. The tomato we are going to leave for a little bit later. And the only other ingredients that we are missing here is the avocado. I'm going to move this over because I've got to cut some of this for the dressing. So you're really looking to chop this uh, garlic and ginger as fine as possible so that it infuses its flavor consistently through the dressing as a uh, thing. And please, I, if you don't want the whole chili, you can put as much as you'd like on it. And so once you have chili and the garlic, you know, you just want to chop that up as fine as you can. If you prefer to just put it in a food processor or a blender, you could, as long as you can get every little piece out of it because you don't want to be wasting any of this. So I am just going to chop this up fine. Add that there and some of that ginger. And again, you want to chop it just like you did the chilies and the garlic. Thinking about immunity-boosting foods is something that is really important. We want to think about our entire diet, not just checking off a box and getting in one food we think is immunity-boosting. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. All right. And so the last two ingredients besides the salmon that need to go into this salad is a chiffonade of mint. You're gonna save one small leaf there for a garnish, but you want a little bit of the mint leaves in there and the tomatoes that we cooked earlier. Like uh, if you remember, I wanted to add it at the end so it doesn't get, it doesn't lose its uh, integrity as far as, as uh, its texture because the more you mix that, just like avocado, it tends to mash the ingredients. So I would rather add the mint and then the tomatoes at the end before we add the salmon to this dish. So. I'm 
I'm going to add the tomatoes to it. When you think of Chef Isaac's salad and all the substitutions that you can make, these are all ways to boost your immunity. Plant-based, colorful, and local foods. I'm going to check on the salmon. You want to insert the probe in the thickest part. Now we're going to drizzle the strawberry yogurt sauce. And finish it with some mint. So here we have it. We've got the salad, in this case with some salmon, that has local fresh ingredients that help make this an amazing meal, an absolutely wonderful dish to eat.